Forbes have kindly given us a list of world leaders who are who are vowing to take the vaccine. President-elect Joe Biden said that he would be happy to stand before the public and prove the vaccine is safe once and for all after it's been authorised by legislators, blah, blah. Uh, Obama said the same thing. Uh, George W. Bush said the same thing. He would gladly get his vaccine on camera. And, of course, Bill Clinton said that he would, of course, be glad to get his vaccine on camera as well. Uh, on camera as well. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has said he wants to serve as a personal example to the citizens of Israel. And uh, Boris Johnson, who has already had COVID, so why he needs a vaccine for COVID is something I don't fully understand. Uh, but he said that he would happily get one on live television as well. And uh, and to join the, uh, the cadre of well-respected uh, world leaders who have promised to have this vaccine live on television, uh, Dr. Tedros from the World Health Organization has said he would be happy to publicly receive the vaccine, but would only do so once it's his turn because I don't want to take anyone's vaccine. Well, I... Because you're too busy gauging in... Well, that was that was the thing. Like, I I always look up to those uh, people who have been uh, accused of genocide and think, have they taken the vaccine? Is, is, whether I take it or not is dependent on how much genocide they've gone into. Uh, Ted Dross is being accused by a, a Dr. David Steinman, an American economist no, no, nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, he's called for him to be a prosecutor for genocide over his alleged involvement in directing Ethiopia's security forces about 20 years ago. Uh, not a great look. Yeah, so the image I get in my mind is he's like, yeah, I'll take the genocide. <laughs> After this, lads. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, but the, the one of the primary uh, proponents of the, the vaccine has been Bill Gates, who, like Ted Ross, is nobly sacrificing himself uh, by allowing other people to have it first. Now, I, I personally have an issue with this, because I think that Ted Ross and Bill Gates, I think their service to humanity has been so great that they actually deserve to take it first. Uh, these people have put all their time and effort into this vaccine. They're here to save us. And they've been... I mean, Bill Gates has probably funded most of this vaccine himself. God knows how much of his billions and billions he's poured into doing all of this. So really, I mean, I think collectively, we owe Bill Gates a debt of gratitude. And this debt of gratitude should be him getting it first. And he's he'll do it, as he says here, look. President-elect Biden um, joined with former Presidents Obama and Bush and Clinton suggesting uh, that they would all take the vaccine publicly. Uh, are you considering doing the same? No, I'll do the same. When it's my turn, I'm not going to budge. But if, when my turn comes up, I will uh, visibly take the vaccine uh, because I, I think that uh, it's a benefit to all, all people to not be transmitting. He didn't sound nervous or anything, did he? He said he's not going to budge, as if this is some weird heroic thing that he's going to do that involves great self-sacrifice or something i don't know but i like the way he's like no i'm not i'm not going to jump the queue i mean he's a you know he's a billionaire he's privileged and he's right in in the in the sake of fairness he shouldn't jump the queue i mean he is what in his 70s now so he actually does qualify for being at the front of the queue and because of his great service to humanity by getting this vaccine developed i actually think that he should be the first i mean he wasn't but now that we know the vaccine's safe because a bunch of people have taken it and it's all been fine uh, after all we've got paul mccartney here who literally said i feel fine after taking it so if paul McC if it's good enough for paul mccartney it's definitely good enough for bill gates how was paul mccartney ahead of him like if this vaccine is you know, bill gates said well you know i don't want to be given special privileges are we suggesting that Paul McCartney just happened to be on the top of the list, are we? It wasn't done by alphabetical order, was it? Like, how did he end up getting at the top of the list? Same with Sir Ian McKellen. You know, if it's good enough for Gandalf, it's definitely good enough for the plebeians. And so we should all be thankful to these rich and powerful people for developing this vaccine and taking it to show us that it's going to be fine. And I really firmly agree. And I have to keep stressing this. Bill Gates deserves that vaccine. I think it would be a crime against humanity if the man responsible for this vaccine was not given it. I mean, what if Bill Gates got COVID tomorrow and died, right? We'd be like, Christ, this guy gave us this vaccine that could have saved his life, 95% efficacy. Uh, should he have not had it first? You know, there is. it would be a tremendous tragedy if that were to happen. Take the vaccine, Bill. Take the vaccine. Live on air. Live on air. On ESPN. <laughs> But uh, Ian McKellen took it. I mean, look, he, he praised the NHS stuff. This is the entire article, right? This is it. This is all they had to say about it. Uh, he says, you know, I want to give them all a big hug. Uh, the Lord of the Rings act says, next time I come, well, no, six days after I come, I'm going to give them all a big hug. Is that allowed? I don't know. The real bonus of all this is to watch and see what works in this country and what doesn't work. And it seems to me the NHS is right at the top of the list for the institutions that do work. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. That didn't age well. Um, 
of course, I know I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for the NHS. He's actually older than the NHS. Uh, but uh, he says, uh, spe- speaking of the vaccine, he said, it is invasive, of course. It looks like a weapon, a needle, but it isn't. It's a friend. I agree. That, that needle is your friend, Bill. Take the vaccine, Bill. Gandalf has signed off on the vaccine, Bill. Take we, two. Why not? We, we, you do need to take two, in fact. And we've, we've all agreed that you're the guy who deserves it the most. Take the vaccine, Bill. Go on. But uh, people are apparently eager to take the vaccine. I don't remember whether I gave you the link here. Uh, but apparently 71% of respondents in late November, early December, uh, in America this was, uh, said that they would take the vaccine, which is up from 63% in an August-September poll. Uh, and the increase was evident across all racial and ethnic groups surveyed, as well as Democrats and Republicans. Uh, presumably, they're looking at Bill Gates' uh, marvellous lead in this, and the fact that all of these other world leaders are lining up. But obviously, you know, they don't want to take someone else's place, but that's okay. As I said, I think if we did a poll, I think everyone would agree you guys should be bumped to the top for your services to humanity in the face of COVID-19. Uh, and like I said, I don't want it to be that Bill Gates has to go without the vaccine. I'm genuinely concerned about his health terrified in fact uh, it would be it'd be terrible if he caught covid I mean, and it's sort of like a hero of the soviet union award exactly. hero of covid exactly hero of the anti-covid activist movement uh, and i i don't want bill gates to end up in a position like this unfortunate chap who actually didn't get the vaccine as we can see on the video here um the uh the guy was being injected and you notice he's a he's a white man but uh what you don't see in this particular video is, in for some reason, uh, in the in the close up of it, you can see there the the plunger is already depressed, and there's actually nothing in the syringe, uh, and I don't want that to happen to Bill Gates. I don't want Bill Gates to go without his COVID vaccine, like this chap has gone without his COVID vaccine. Now, this was told to us to be a mistake by uh, CBS4 Local. Uh, they they investigated and they included the full video. It's a 17-minute video, as you can see, with other people at the side there getting vaccinated. Now, he was the only one to go without the vaccine. Oh, so and- they, they ran out. Oh, I don't know. No, he was the second person. So there were five of them. The first person was, um, I think, the, that lady in the middle one, the lady lady of color there. And you can see she's getting her vaccine, and you can see there's definitely something in it to press the plunger, and she's fine. You know, they take the vaccine, it, everything's is it, fine. Is it different needles? Or? Of course, it's different needles. No, I mean like, so why? How did they give? Him but a for fake some one? reason, just his needle just had nothing in and was already depressed. Right. So all of them were done, and then his one was just done. Yeah. So he, the the first lady came up and she got hers. Everything's fine. It's nothing. It's a vaccine. I've had loads of vaccines. Everyone's had vaccines. Like these are not a big deal. It's just an injection. But uh, but then he goes up and his is already depressed. And you can see the guy as he's doing. It, he's kind of fiddling around with it. Like, hmm, what am I supposed to do with this? But he just carries on like he's just given the vaccine, even though the guy has clearly gone with that. And then the other women and another. They're all uh, women and non-white people get the actual vaccine. I'm thinking, wow, that's that's weird. The white man that is the one person who doesn't get it. I mean, Bill Gates is a white man. I don't want him to be racially discriminated against when it comes to these COVID vaccines. And I'm really worried about this now. I think there might be actually be some racial discrimination against white men in particular, but white people in general, about getting this vaccine. And it could well be that this mistake was actually a consequence of unconscious bias or something like that. Now, again, I don't want Bill Gates to fall victim to this. So I'm very concerned that he gets the proper vaccine as uh, is shown. But the, the problem is the weird way, I mean, Bill Gates doubtless not getting it in the UK, but in the UK, if, if we're a model for the rest of the world, then uh, there will be further problems, because in the UK we're having real problems rolling out the vaccine. As Sky News reports, the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine could be delayed by technical issues, doctors and health officials have warned, after the first week of the vaccination programme was marred by difficulties in data collection. A senior health official told Sky News that the IT system known as Pinnacle was failing constantly, and that GPs were having to record on paper then transfer, the, which is something that the NHS in England strongly disputes, but uh, okay. Uh, Ian McKellen's statements on the NHS being infallible are kind of... Hmm. Uh, but official, by now. Yes. Um, but the officials say that um, it could explain why the government has struggled to publish figures on why, how many people uh, have been actually vaccinated uh, when Vaccine Minister Nadim Zawi uh, tweeted the first official numbers. It creates a backlog of patients because we have to manually keep that on paper, but then someone has to enter it at a later date, and all of this is a delay. It's not nice weather. We've got old people standing in the cold. We don't want these delays. And he, he's right. We've got Bill Gates standing out in the cold, waiting for his COVID vaccine, and he's in the danger zone. And he's, he's a white man, and I don't want him to go without. Uh, but the reason that I emphasize that he's a white man is because there does seem to be actually a, a racial 
distribution of vaccines that is being promoted by the great and good around us. Uh, not only in this country, but also in the United States. For example, the, these are clips from a New York Times article uh, that uh, someone had excerpted for, from Twitter uh, on Twitter. And uh, this is really interesting. Harold Schmidt, an expert in ethics and health policy at the University of Pennsylvania, said it was reasonable to put essential workers ahead of older adults, given their risks, and, why, and that they are disproportionately minorities. Older populations are whiter... Society is structured in a way that enables them to live longer. Instead of giving additional health benefits to those who already have more of them, we can start to level the playing field a bit. So we have a, a racial on. equality agenda built in to the distribution of the COVID vaccine. This is why I'm so concerned about Bill Gates, right? Not only have we got an example of a white man not being given the virus, it looks like on purpose, it's already been depressed. I don't want a bunch of racists to deny Bill Gates this crucial healthcare that he spent so much time and effort promoting and clearly is in need of. Just to underline as well, they're not talking about healthcare workers there. He's not saying healthcare workers should get it before the elderly. No, the older people are white. Therefore, they're less He's important. He's saying essential workers. Yeah. So people who work in supermarkets should get it before the elderly, even though the elderly are at higher risk. We're essential workers. Yeah, we are. Consider us essential, folks, <laughs> by signing up to loadseaters.com. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yeah, so we're we're actually more entitled to the vaccine than Bill Gates. So I will. But we are also less entitled because of our race. Yes, uh, I personally will give up my position for Bill Gates. Um, I'll consider it my civic duty. I'll take the bullet for you, Bill. Um, you can have the vaccine, and I'll 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 I'm happy to stand there and make sure that it's one full of uh, whatever the vaccine is, um, because I don't want you going without. Uh, but this continues. Mark Lipstitch, an infectious disease epidemiologist at Harvard's T.H. Chan School of Public Health, argued that teachers should not be included as essential workers if a central goal of the committee is to reduce health inequities. Again, we're not... We're not health inequities. Right. So now it's about equality of health. Now it's not about the coronavirus. Now it's about racial equalization. Teachers have middle-class salaries, are very often white, and they have college degrees. Of course they should be treated better, but they are not among the most mistreated of, of workers. What a bizarre way of looking at the situation. Why on earth is that what they're considering here? It's the kind of thing you expect from people who are selling pens in the middle of the street. Is yeah, it? People with signs on that say the end is now. Like, the problem with the teachers is they're too white, therefore they shouldn't have the vaccine. Well, I just don't understand why their race has to come into it. I mean, and the thing is, they're not even making an argument based on race, really. They're, they're making an argument based on racial inequality. Because, I mean, you could actually formulate an argument that is scientific based on race. Because, uh, for example, the UK government has been advising that people who have dark skin, so, you know, non-white people, basically, uh, should take extra vitamin D. Because they actually did a study of this recently and found that uh, it, black people, Caribbean people, who live in the United Kingdom have 53% less vitamin D uh, than white people who live in the United Kingdom. And this is a problem because vitamin D is essential to your immune system, and it's your immune system, of course, that fights COVID. And this is one of the reasons that they think is a compounding factor as to why COVID-19 has affected uh, the Caribbean community more than others. There are also various other health issues and stuff with the Caribbean community, apparently. So the, the, this well, the is... Well, the study isn't finished yet. Sure, but the, these are the preliminary findings. Uh, so you could, you could make an argument saying, well, that there is actually a reason that you might do this but not because white people are privileged and They've because privilege because we need to equalize the racial uh, divide in health i mean this is just communist rhetoric coming in the form of covid vaccination like and it's like, race health communism yeah that's <laughs> That's literally what they're saying. I mean, it's not even scientifically based, even though they could make a scientific argument there. Um, but, but like I said, so this is why I'm genuinely concerned that Bill Gates isn't going to get the vaccine that he's lobbied so hard for. He's in the danger zone. He deserves it. He is a hero of the Republic. He's saved millions of lives, I've got no doubt. He deserves that vaccine. But uh, this, this racial agenda apparently goes all the way to our NHS. You found so this, didn't you? We, we've reported on this before, but I wanted to signal boost it again because yeah. it ties in perfectly. That this was a text sent to someone in, in Reading in the UK, and you had to fill in this form at the local NHS clinic. And if you had to put your ethnicity, and usually there's a category to say, I prefer not to say, and the NHS didn't allow that, you had to give them one. You had to say you were Arab, a different ethnic group, uh, black, Asian, mixed, or white. Because, as they say at the top, government guidance requires us to record the ethnicity of our patients to prioritise healthcare. 
including the COVID vaccine. So we're going to be prioritizing healthcare based on racial categories. Mm. Again, I'm so concerned Bill Gates is going to miss out on this virus uh, vaccine. So I, I'm genuinely worried about his health. He's my hero. 